essentially colonization resistance is a concept that the millions of beneficial bacteria that naturally reside within the gut, um, not only are they crucial for nutrient digestion and metabolism, but uh, they're really important for protecting the host from invasion of pathogens. Um, and they do this through uh, four main mechanisms, the first being um, nutrient competition or uh, competitive exclusion. So the idea that you have a diverse group of millions of bacteria, they all occupy various niches, different space, and utilize different nutrients. So if a pathogen were to want to colonize, they would need to outcompete your natural bacteria. Um, secondly, is the idea of secreting antimicrobial metabolites such as bacteriocins that can directly kill the pathogen. Third, they help to stimulate the immune system of the host. And lastly, they help to strengthen the intestinal lining. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host today, Kelly Walmsley, and I'm joined by Isabel Tobin. Hey, Isabel. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. So you are a doctoral candidate at Oklahoma State, right? Yes, yes. So you're looking into um, some research about necrotic enteritis mm -hmm. and poultry. So I'm excited to dive into that with you today. Um, before we get uh, all started, I want to ask you three this or that questions, okay? Just to get to know you a little bit. Sure. All right. Uh, broiler or layer? Broiler. Okay. Crunchy or soft taco? Uh, soft taco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and aisle or window seat? Window, window. All right, great. Okay, so a little bit of background. So you went to um, you went to school in Ohio, but not the one that maybe everyone's thinking of, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, small school named University of Finley. Okay, and then you and then you came straight for your PhD over at Oklahoma State, and been there for four years straight through. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Well. So let's talk, let's dive into it and talk a little bit about your research. Um, so you're looking at colonization resistance mm -hmm. specifically, right? So, so what does that mean? And um, kind of give me a little bit of a little bit of an intro into your, your dissertation research. Sure. Uh, so my lab, uh, I work with Dr. Glenn Zhang, um, and his lab mainly focuses on trying to find antibiotic-free solutions to prevent necrotic enteritis. And my dissertation project largely focuses on leveraging colonization resistance through the use of commensals or probiotics to prevent necrotic enteritis. Um, and so essentially, colonization resistance is a concept that the millions of beneficial bacteria that naturally reside within the gut, um, not only are they crucial for nutrient digestion and metabolism, but uh, they're really important for protecting the host from invasion of pathogens. Um, and they do this through uh, four main mechanisms, the first being um, nutrient competition or uh, competitive exclusion. So the idea that you have a diverse group of millions of bacteria, they all occupy various niches, different space, and utilize different nutrients. So if a pathogen were to want to colonize, they would need to outcompete your natural bacteria. Um, secondly, is the idea of secreting antimicrobial metabolites such as bacteriocins that can directly kill the pathogen. Third, they help to stimulate the immune system of the host. And lastly, they help to strengthen the intestinal lining. Um, so increasing tight junction proteins, preventing uh, pathogens from crossing the intestinal lining. So uh, yeah, I've kind of screened lots of commensals and found a couple that have kind of stuck out. So. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, the ASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high-quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Oh, that's great. So uh, I guess in your screening process, what does that look like? Where are you getting some of the samples to be able to start screening through those, um, that bacteria? Yeah, so our lab has done a lot of culturomics work. Um, we've isolated digestive contents from broilers of different ages. We've also looked at Fayumi breed, uh, which is an Egyptian breed that is known to be resistant to a lot of diseases. Um, and between all that, we've isolated a lot of uh, novel strains. 
And with those hundreds of bacteria, we screen them all in the lab for first for their anti-clostridium perfringens activity. Um, and then we kind of do a little follow up to see kind of how they're um, inhibiting CP, whether it's through nutrient competition or through metabolites. And then we test them in our animal trials. Oh, very neat. Um, so taking it into the animals. So how do you, what does that look like? How do you um, how do you, you know, introduce them to the animals? And, you know, what have you found um, in, in some of that, the, that research? Yeah, so um, we use uh, direct uh, culture, so diluted bacterial culture, and we'll just do an oral inoculation. Usually the preliminary trials, we try different doses, different time points, but, you know, our ideal goal is to get like day zero, day one. So like first day of hatch, we give them the bacteria once and they're protected. Um, and that's a case for one of them, uh, but some of them we need to give more frequently. Um, and uh, then we challenge them using a co-infection model of Imeria maxima and CP. Um, and one of my bacteria, uh, we can't share the information now because we're working on patents and publications and whatnot, but um, one of them, we uh, saw necrotic enteritis cause a survival rate of about 50%, but um, after administration with my bacteria, almost completely eliminated any mortality associated with any. So it was really exciting to see that. Um, and so that's one of my uh, main focuses moving forward. So. Yeah, that's really neat. Um, that's, that's really exciting stuff. I know, um, that's, it's, you know, necrotic enteritis is a big issue and even, you know, necrotic enteritis, that's also, I mean, causing, you know, issues from a mortality standpoint and morbidity, but when it's even subclinical, um, that can, that can cost uh, a lot of money. So do you also test these and look at them and, you know, subclinical, um, avenues or also in um, even healthy birds? Yeah, for sure. Um, we, uh, our model usually is the more clinical side. I guess our concept is like, if it works that well, then hopefully it'll work on like a smaller scale. Um, and we also measure like weight gain changes and things like that as well. Sure. Um, oh, healthy birds. Yeah. Um, when we find one that works well, uh, we also will include like a healthy control just to make sure that it has no negative effect on the healthy chickens. Um, we also will look at how it affects the microbiome development in those healthy birds because that can also give us an insight into how this bacteria is actually preventing any because, um, you know, colonization resistance isn't necessarily just one bacteria. It's usually the whole community that is playing a role um, in the whole ecosystem is really preventing the pathogen. Yeah. Well, that's, that's really neat. And I like how you, you said like you have, you're taking several different bacteria and then some of the, and testing them in a, a lot of different ways. And so then you're looking at, well, does it colonize? Can you only give it one time and then it's going to be effective? Or, you know, do you have to do some of these multi, you know, multiple um, ways to inoculate the bird or, or get it into the bird's digestive tract? So um, that's a really comprehensive approach um, to it. Are you looking at, you know, where this would be something that could be added into the water or the feed? Are you at that point uh, to kind of know what the route you're going or still in the early stages? Um, I would say we're getting to that point. Um, yeah. One of the bacteria we use is anaerobic. So that kind of poses a challenge with how we're able to uh, give that. Um, we've thought about maybe some sort of capsule or gel, maybe like a spray on thing. Uh, so that way they're kind of eat, getting it that way. Um, but that's, yeah, definitely the next step of the project. Well, cool. That's an exciting next step, um, I'm sure. And hopefully you got to name the bacteria after you or something, you know? <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it, it was, uh, I guess it's just not used for this purpose, you know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that would have be cool. been really cool. <laughs> well, so you finish up in the spring um, with your PhD, hopefully. And I'm sure everything, it sounds like, um, I mean, you're hitting the ground running and going and um, you've, you've done a lot of work. So I'm sure that's not going to be an issue. What, what are your next steps? What are you thinking to do? Um, I've really found a passion in, with gut health, um, in poultry particularly. So hopefully to continue that avenue, potentially working in industry. Um, I think that's where I'd like to begin my career. All right. Awesome. Well, um, I guess it's about time for us to finish up today. Um, anything else that you want to kind of leave us with? Um, just thanks for having me. I'm really honored to be able to speak about my lab's research um, on the podcast. And uh, with the industry's large focus on gut health now and poultry, I'm really excited to see the new developments in the next five to 10 years. And I'm looking forward to being part of it. 
Yeah, well, I think you got a good foot in the door to be a part of it for sure. Um, <laughs> well, so um, thanks for joining us, Isabel. And um, I've got one more question since we are on the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Jackie Chan or Chuck Norris? Uh, geez, uh, I guess Jackie Chan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. All right, thanks, Isabel. Thanks again for joining us. And thanks to our listeners and, and uh, out there and viewers. That concludes us for another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm Kelly Wamsley, and join us next time. Bye, Isabel. Bye, thank you.